Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at the solution to question 10 on the May-June 2022 CSEC Mathematics Paper 2. And so we begin by looking at the first part of the question, which is um, matrices and transformations. And it says that the, the matrix A, 0, negative 1, 1, 0, represents a rotation of 90 degrees anticlockwise about the origin O. And the matrix B, 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, represents a reflection in the straight line with equation y equal minus x. <laughs> Our first task is to write down the coordinates of P prime, the image of the point P, 7, 11, after it undergoes a rotation by 90 degrees anticlockwise. So we are going to use this matrix to find the image of this point. So P prime is going to be equal to the matrix 0, negative 1, 1, 0. And we're going to multiply that by the point 7, 11. We're going to write it as a column matrix for now. And of course, multiplying row by column, we get 0 times 7. That's 0. And negative 1 times um, 11 gives us plus negative 11. And 1 times 7, second row now, 1 times 7 is 7. And 0 times 11 is 0. And so we get our point, which is negative 11 and 7. And of course, we need to write that back as a coordinate, or a pair of coordinates, as negative 11, 7. So that is our, um, that is our answer to P prime. And the second part is to... It says T is the combined the transformation of A followed by B. Determine the elements of the matrix representing the transformation T. So it says A followed by B. So it looks like we should find the matrix AB. Um, however, looking at this situation here, if we use the point P, then what happens is that it says A followed by B. So A is going to affect it first. And if A affects it first, then whatever we get out of that answer, B is going to um, um, affect it next. So rather than finding the matrix AB, we're actually going to find the matrix BA. And you know in matrices, um, BA and AB are not necessarily the same things um, as it comes to the commutative properties of matrices. So let's find BA then. BA is equal to 0, negative 1, negative 1, 0, and we're multiplying it by A, which is 0, negative 1, 1, 0. Let's do our multiplication. 0 times row by column, so 0 times 0 is 0, plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. Then row by column, 0 times negative 1 is 0, plus negative 1 times 0 is 0. Row by column again, negative 1 times 0 is 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0, and negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, and 0 times 0 is 0. So the elements of the matrix T are negative 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, negative 1, 0, 0, 1. That's that. Um, describe geometri geometrically the transformation represented by T. So remember we said T was negative 1, 0, 0, 1. So um, let's describe it. Now many, many students, very good students, actually try to memorize these. And some of them actually memorize them well. Um, I'm not one of those persons who can memorize these things easily uh, because they're so close to each other. So what I normally do is, in an exam situation like this, I look at the matrix, I try it out on something and see what it does. So let's say we set up a small grid, and I'm going to write a point here and call this point 2, 3. All right? Let's see what this point does to it. I'm going to multiply it and see what it does to it. So if I multiply this point by 2, 3, for say, for example, 2, 3. Um, then row by column, so negative 1 times 2. Gives me negative 2 there, and 0 times 3 is 0, and 0 times 2 is um, 0. 
and 1 times 3 is 3. So what I get is the point negative 2, 3, which means negative 2, 3. So this point here, which is 2, 3, is going to end up over here. This is our y-axis. It's going to end up over here being negative 2, 3, which tells you that this point is the image of that under a reflection in this axis. So T is a reflection in the y-axis. We call that line x equals 0. And that's pretty much what T is doing. So if you come across a situation like this and you're looking at this matrix and saying, what, 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 what does this matrix do? Then what you should do is try it out on something and see what it does, just like I did here. And in doing that, you will see how the matrix affects the point. If you can't see it with one point, then try a triangle. Three points and a triangle usually gives you a better idea as to how it looks if you can't decide with one point. Um, next part of the question is, <clears throat> C is a two by two matrix. It's um, in terms of a scalar, constant K, and we have to determine the value of K given that matrix C is singular. Now, what's a singular matrix? A singular matrix has a determinant of zero. That's what it means. Um, so the determinant of C is zero. If a matrix is singular, it has a zero determinant. So what does that mean? How do we find the determinant? We multiply the diagonal, three, four, minus six K, six times K, and that will equal to zero since the determinant is zero. Um, remember, it. <clears throat> so we have 12 minus 6k is equal to zero. And because of that, we have 12 equals 6k, and therefore k is equal to 12 over 6, which is equal to 2. So to find the determinant, remember that the, the, the determinant of a matrix A, which is equal to A, B, C, D, um, the determinant A is equal to AD minus BC. So that's what we did here. Multiply these two, the product of these two, these two minus the product of those two. Because it is singular, we know that the determinant should be zero. So we pretty much just do that. And we got our answer there. <laughs> Moving on, here we have a vector question, part C, in the diagram drawn below, O is the origin x o x is equal to u so there it is o x is equal to u o y is equal to v very good and o x and o y are drawn longer extended so that x and y are the midpoints so this is the midpoint of o a and this is the midpoint of o b we are to find b x in terms of u and v so let us find b x so let's draw a line from B to X. How do we get from B to X? That is the question. To get from B to X, we can go B to O and then O to X. Now, this OY is equal to V, which and it, y is the midpoint, so right here is also equal to v. And so this line going in that direction is equal to 2v going in that direction. But we need to use it in the opposite direction. So bx is equal to bo, and bo is going to be the opposite of this, which is minus 2v plus ox, and ox is u. Just like that. Or if you want to write it up a little more tidy, you could say u minus 2v. Same thing. That is our answer to bx. All right. bx is equal to u minus 2v. All right. Given that ya and bx intersect at m, so ya and bx intersect at m, so let's join some more stuff. ya and bx intersect at m, 
So here's where we have him. Mm -hmm. And BM is 2MX. BM is equal to 2MX. So this part of the long is twice as long as this, which means that if you cut the line in three, then this part is going to be two thirds of the line and this part is going to be one third of the line. All right. So express BM in terms of U and V. So let's find BM. So BM is going to be two thirds of the line BX. That's what we can see. BM is equal to two thirds of BX. So BM is equal to two thirds of BX. And what is BX equal to? BX is equal to what we just found. BX is equal to U minus 2V. So U minus 2V, and that is what BM is equal to. All right. This is important. It says BM is equal to 2 times MX. I'm going to just go through that again. BM is twice that. So whatever this is, you multiply by 2, and that means that the thing, if the line is there, then you would cut it in 3, and this is twice as long as that. Now, um, let's go to the next part of the question. Using a vector method, show that the ratio of YM to YA is equal to 1 to 3. YM to YA, YM to YA is equal to 2 to 3. So we need to find YM and we need to find YA. Let us find, let us find YA. YA. I'm going to be jumping back and forth to the diagram. So let's go back. YA. How do we get from Y to A? To get from Y to A, we go YO plus OA. To go from Y to A, if we wanted to travel there, we travel from Y to O and then O to A. So YO, YO plus OA. That's how we get there. And we know that YO is equal to V, I mean, OY is V, so we're going to write YO as minus V, and then this is U, and this is going to be U, so it's negative V plus 2U, all right? So this is going in that direction, so it's 2U, but this one is going in the opposite direction, so it's a minus V, so it's minus V plus 2U, so we have found that, so we have found YA. Now we, uh, we need to find now YM. Now the question is, how do we get from Y to M? You could go all the way around here. Come back there. YO plus OX plus XM. Or we could use the smaller version and go YB to BM. All right. So YB to BM, I'm going to use that one. So YM is equal to YB to get from Y to M. We go from Y to B and then B to M. So YM is equal to YB plus BM. Now YB, you remember, that's equal to V. And BM, we found it. BM was two-thirds of U minus 2V. Two thirds of u minus two v. This one is a little ugly, so let's try and tidy it up so we can see it clearly. Let's put that over one. So our LCM is three. All right. So we say three v there. One to three goes three. Three v plus three to three one. So we multiply by two here. Two u minus 4v, all right? So we end up with um, 3v, take away 4v, leaves us, leaves us with a minus v plus 2u over 3. And that is ym. 
All right. Now that we found our YM, we need to look at this ratio. Now you probably can look at it and realize that if you multiply this by three, then the three will cancel out and you will be left with minus V plus two U. Or if you divide this by three, then you'd end up with exactly that. So we can see that they are related as well already. So what we can do now to just tidy it up is to say YM divided by YA is equal to, that is YM equal to, minus V plus 2U over 3 divided by YA which is minus V plus 2U. Let's put that over 1. And then let's divide this out. So we have minus V plus 2U over 3 times 1 over minus V plus 2U. And you notice that these two things cancel out because they are exactly the same. And what we're left with here with is 1 third. So Y m over y a is equal to one third which means that if we want to write it out in ratio form um y m here to y a this to this would actually be equal to this to this and so that's how we would do it um that's an apart from the obvious that you could look at it and see that um if you multiply this by 3, you get that one. If you multiply this one by, if you divide this one by 3, you get that one. Then this is how we actually go about showing it in this nice way that the question has it. And that brings us to the end of our question. And um, I hope that you would have found it useful. And if you have, then please remember to subscribe before you go as a show of your support. Thank you so much for watching and the best wishes as you continue to work forward and move forward.